it's almost like back then they want me. Now they now I'm hot. They all on me. Don't want me. You know what I'm trying to say? And I'm not saying that's how I'm moving, but that's how it could feel. Like you ain't want me then, don't want me now. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be honest, like I hear what you're saying. And I empathize with you too. However, I, I only can walk in my shoes. And that right there is the same reason why in my head I was like, would you even want to carry another baby? Like, I thought about that before because it's like, I don't want to go through that again. I don't want to be disconnected in my relationship again. I don't want to. And women think like that. Like, it's like, do I want to deal with that again to feel like I'm carrying a child, whatever. And now this is happening. And, I, you know, I, we having a power struggle because I'm carrying a baby. You feel away. I feel away. It's like nobody wants to go through that shit again. To think that, like, I wouldn't want to have another baby by you or not saying you. You ain't say that verbatim, but it's like the fact that's a, a thought. And I'm like, bro, I was, I was so much, I was so many other things. Like when I don't know when, 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 when it was time for working and it was hard, and I'm like, nah, like, like let me take. Like it was like I was so many other things, but because I like that, it seems like that's the end of the world. And I don't think that's fair. Alex, bring us in, bro. Join our Scorpio podcast. <laughs> she Shade is here. Jay Hill is here. I'm Alexander so- DeBlanc is here. I'm sorry that I sound like a man coming in, but um, here I am showing up. Let's let's clap it up to yeah, you. Yeah, Dug it out yeah, the last few weeks, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still showing up. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Sure. I definitely give you that. It's you feel been me? Rough. It's been rough for me. Jay has let me know that he does not like my voice multiple times. Mm. Mm. And you know it's 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 hard out here for me. Mm. Yeah, mm. but nonetheless, you're here. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Mm-hmm. Sure my nice. shirt. Who was that? Cardi B? No. Who was that? <laughs> that 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 Jamaican girl, Shinzi. I'm gonna Ooh. be honest. I don't know who this is. She's just rocking a random chick on you. It just says bad gal. Bad gal. Tough. At gal. Mm. Yeah. Okay. What's the Jamaican girl name? Shinsia? Yeah, yeah. What about yeah. her? I thought it might have been her. Oh yeah. That's my girl. Oh. Even though I don't what did know she none do? of her music. Oh, she made music. <laughs> I like, no, I know some of her music, but I don't really know her music. She look good though. She's fire. Yeah, she she's fire really cute. Sure. Yo, do you think um do you do you feel uncomfortable when I be like girls are cute or something? No, I think they're fine as hell all the time. You never told me that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't Cause you don't want to hear it, cause yeah. you have displayed. What do you worry. think is fine? <laughs> don't worry about me, sweetheart. I, I'm curious. Don't worry about me, sweetheart. I'm, I'm curious. Who you, like, what's your type? Sound crazy. I feel like when I look <laughs> when I look at you, I just feel like your type is like what's light, my type? Brown skin, like I don't like light skin. Oh, so who you think is fine? Light brown skin. No, I'm. I don't. Have, let me get that correct. I don't have a preference of skin, just as long as you're not like light light skin. Who who's fine? Like who's somebody you like? Nah, you're Why? Fine. Just curious. I don't even know, honestly. Can't I would have to see somebody and be like, oh, you fine as hell. So you know the last person you no, saw that was I, like that? Maybe fine. I don't know his name. He probably was in passing. Oh, that's... What the f***? God, damn, I'm thinking like... It's, God, wait. Hold up. Maybe I don't want to... What the, Just in passing? That's yeah. crazy. Sheesh. I never said they was a celebrity. Celebrities don't even be that cute. Yeah. Huh. So it was just a random, regular you thought know, was just fine Why if f- see somebody in passing? They got to be a regular... And I'm saying like a random, like... Random, yeah, they could be random, but regular. It's like so, what's fine to you? What's your what's your type? I like people who just put themselves together. Well, like it could be male or female. Just like long as you like look like you 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 clean, like you clean, like you smell good, your nails is clean, your hair together, your your outfit put together nice. Like I like when you look clean. So sometimes it don't even automatically mean like you f- like your features is just fire. It's like the whole ensemble. Like, so it was like, oh, you, you're not, you look good. You, you put so basically, you'll fall for ugly. N- I've had a couple of ugly n- in my day. I did. But they was put together. As long as they got money. But they was put together. You're reaching. I said they was put together. Okay. Put together nice. Yeah. Yes. For sure. I like my girls that look like you. Thank you, babe. I appreciate you. You know, you've said it multiple times the last couple episodes we recorded. Was fine, fat ass, big old stupid ass. You know, yeah, I would put her in a Ford Nelson. I never yeah. said that. Why? I never said I would do that. Never. I said when you thinking about it, because you thought about it. That's my point. So nah. you, just told, 
You told me several times how you would put a girl in a four Nelson. Like every time I think I'm like, pow, pow, open my phone with fat ass. So every time I know. I don't think about that stuff though. I've seen you scroll your Instagram is mad. You follow mad girls. So that means when you're telling me like, yeah, you open your Instagram, fat ass, bow, big Mm -hmm. ass, stupid, dupe ass. It's because you, that's who all you see on your timeline. So you looking at girls thinking they find every single day. So thinking somebody is fine and thinking I want to do something to them is different for me. Like I don't, I don't think I've ever like. You know smash. what hurt my feelings one time? What? We were just dating in the beginning, and I used to go look at your Twitter because I wanted to see what type of person you were. One time. <laughs> Why was you looking at my Twitter? <laughs> one time, Ooh. I pulled up Jay's Twitter. He's like, mind you, I see him in like three, four days. This like, you ever just walk past somebody and they fine as hell? You just like, God damn, fine as hell. Yeah, that just happened. <laughs> um, I ain't see you ass in four, three, three, four days. What you mean? That just happened. Nah, yeah. um, nah, I don't. But I don't look at girls. Be like, I don't idolize no woman. Like, I don't look at chicks. Like, and you don't be like, damn, she pretty as hell. That's not. I nah, I be like, some girls are pretty, but like shortly after that, it depends on a chick. Like, because a lot of these chicks is fine because of money and. If they find they find it don't matter. And that's not true. You just said Shinsia was fine. Shinsia has her teeth done. But that's what I'm about, saying. Like, but that's my thought. Shortly after, I'm just being honest. That's just me. Like because, what, what JT first, said, you're not ugly. You're broke. Yo, period. I can't make this up, bro. Because look, think about it. Let me. I ain't gonna lie. If I had money, we talk about my thought process. Would hit me. Listen. Hate me. We talk about my. <coughs> we talk about my thought process, and I'm telling you, me, me personally, when I look at chicks, the chicks that I think is like super attractive, uh-huh. they pay for a lot of. Shit. So I'm like, I don't get lost. Like, this is me. Per- I'm being so, so honest. the conversation wasn't that you get lost in it. The conversation was that you think they're fine. But shortly like, after, I be like, I think about you. I'll be like, if my bitch had, you know what I'm saying? Like, I swear to God, I can't. That's me. Listen, you don't have to believe me. I'm just telling you. That's I how I I said I didn't believe you. I just said that wasn't But yeah, I don't think about, I don't never think about, like, what I would do to a chick. You just told me you would put them in a four announcement. I put this on everything. I don't, ago. but I promise you. So that never helped me. <laughs> okay. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think about that either, though. But you don't have to. I don't. I don't. <laughs> what? No. Yeah. So that's just not what we do. That's a beautiful thing. We're saints. No, I'm not no saint. I st- I can acknowledge my girl pretty for sure. Yeah, that's the whole conversation. That was the only conversation. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't really care about like. But people are attractive, and that's okay. Facts. People are attractive. I'm sure people look at you and find you attractive. People look at me and find me attractive. I don't think people look at me and find me attractive. Oh, Jay. I feel like they probably attracted to. Oh, thank God. I'm being serious. I've been always said this. That never changed. I'm the same person. Like I feel like people are attracted of who I am. Probably like my personality, like things that make me different. Oh, but all that stuff makes you attractive. Okay, I guess you got it. You got it. Like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Girls love personality, funny niggas, witty yeah. niggas. Charming niggas, you always said I'm so charming. Girls like me because I'm charming. So, period. fair, yeah, not for sure. Those things are attractive. Mm. Yeah, I like you, babe. Mm, I like you too. Anytime I look at you, I be like, you look good. Yeah. Lie and say. You do. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right. I tell you, look handsome all the time. Do you? Say I don't. If I say you don't, then what? You lying. Do okay. I or not? You do. Come on, let's go. Let's get to the episode. Right. And now, actually, you no longer tell me I look fine. You just be like, you look just like Alani. No, I said Alani looks just like you. You be like, you look just like Alani. <laughs> you stop saying I'm fine. You be like, you look just like my daughter. <laughs> I told you thank you the other day. I was like, thank you for giving me Alani. Mm. You're welcome. Yeah, it was like. She do look like me, though. She do. Mm-hmm. That's dope. I remember when I called Jay and I was like, yo, Sade copied and pasted Alani. He was like, nah, she got my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, do, she do have his eyebrows. Same eyebrows. She made the same expressions. It'd be so funny. I hate when she make my expressions, though. Yeah, she'd be I like, like it. <laughs> she make his expressions, but she got everything else to me. She'd be like, I like, stop. <laughs> and then when I fear her, she'd be looking right directly in my eyes. I'd be like, bro, stop looking at me. <laughs> what? That's tell like, stop it looking make at you want to like melt. Like, yeah, bro, she's, she's just be cute. like, nah, I'm stop not looking at me, bro. She's cute. That threw me off. Like, 
Mm-hmm. The first time I ever seen Jay and Alani like interact, I just hear him in the corner and he's just, just being a great mm-hmm. father. Like it like just it's cute. Just amazing, it's bro. Cute. And Every I was just time like, I man. Watch him, him and Alani or Amaya and Alani, I just be like, oh my God, this is like the cutest thing. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, like, Alani you- is spoiled child. She running the house. Hey. She running the house right now. She got my mom over there smitten. Let's get to this episode, y'all. Come on. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Cheers. It's right on par. Salud. Mm-hmm. Salud. Well, what we're talking about today. Well, kind of. But we're talking about keeping things fresh in a relationship. Mm. Um, mm. It was... Uh, <laughs> It's kind of funny. I had a funny clip that we were to, I can tell you what don't off. keep it fresh in a relationship. What? A DUI. <laughs> <laughs> You're dramatic, bro. <laughs> You're dramatic. Like, honestly. IUD is what he's talking about. People. IUD. Oh. <laughs> DUI. Just to clarify. Oh, I've yeah. never heard nobody call it a DUI. Security, it, coochie, whatever. Like, it's shit. Our coochie, boy. That's you crazy. So That's throwback. All right, come on, man. Nah, uh, <laughs> but the reason why I was laughing is... <laughs> Stop it. I seen a clip uh, where somebody was on another podcast and they basically were talking about uh, reading... The individual read somebody's journal. We got the mm-hmm. clip, so you could play it. And basically, her reaction yeah. after she <laughs> <laughs> chill, Go ahead bro, and chill. Play it, Jay. She saw play the clip. What, what they said? Y'all got your headphones? Oh shoot! Baby, yeah, that's see. my headphones. Yeah, let's go listen to it. I don't know why that laugh was, but I'm gonna let it rock. Let it rock. I'm gonna let it rock. All right, let's play it. Let's see what we talking about. Sure. Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. Hold up. All right. Ready. Ready. Yes, sir. I'm in couples therapy. I went through his journal. What it said was, she wears the cheapest wigs. <laughs> she pissed me off and she had this to say with her cheap and wigs. And I closed that book so quickly. Hocus pocus. He had got home. I was right. I'm going to bed. It was 8.30. You could tell the energy's off. I couldn't hide it even if I tried. And I was in the kitchen just fumbling. He's like, what is going on? I went through your diary. There have been multiple times when I got dressed and I literally came to you and was like, does this wig look wiggy? You looked me in my eyes and said, no. I had no right to go through your journal. I'm not owed an apology for that. I told the therapist that I did that. She was like, oh, when your feelings hurt? I was like, very. He felt so bad. He was like, I was pissed and I didn't give a and I was like, fuck you and them cheap wigs. I still have those wigs under my sink. Why? Because I like some of them. <laughs> that dark black one that's wavy. And that was one that he was really talking about. His celebrity crush is JT from City Girls. I thought you would like this. I really hope this doesn't become a viral clip. But would it be funny? Yeah. You gotta do it for the people. So what about the clip? <laughs> well, so essentially what I'm saying is my wig's a thousand dollars. So... Shout out to Kendall Baldwin. If you need your wigs, at Kendall Baldwin. Kendall got the game on a chokehold, bro. She I mean, got the DMV yeah, in a, a chokehold. I love it for her. Matter of fact, you know. Well, go ahead. What's so, up with you, bro? Yo, read, yo, so you was read crazy. It, she read the journal. Huh? Tie it in. Go ahead. You said she read oh, it. nah. Uh, <laughs> but basically, like, <laughs> keeping a relationship fresh. Um, and... The things that you should do for your partner to keep your relationship fresh. Boom. Why you? Anyways. What it had to do with the journal and the wig? The journal and the wig? Yeah. Because I think getting a new wig is a part of keeping your relationship <laughs> fresh. Chris, like, let's think about it. No, all right, go like, ahead. look, your dude don't Yo, like the wig that you with. You walking on her <laughs> side looking busty. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily saying that she would have got there. Right. Without reading his journal, but it made me think. How like, else would she have known? <laughs> having the conversations to keep things fresh in your relationship. But sometimes you wear like, hey, sometimes you you gotta like. <laughs> All right, I wore cheaper wigs before for sure. Um, you know, like your impromptu, quick, like in between hairstyle is what I call it. Like I'm about to get my hair done, but not just yet. So I need to throw on one of my thump thumps. You know what I'm trying to say? So yeah, but my thing is, why he ain't just be like, babe? That wig not it. That wig not it. But Ooh, is it because I was gonna say, is it because then if he said it, then he had to buy it? Because <laughs> I feel like if you complain about it, you better have a solution. I don't know. I mean, I just feel like because 
We can't. T- that's why I like, asked you that. I feel like we can't tell y'all nothing. Babe, do I look fat in this dress? You look good, babe. But why you can't just find a way to say it? Because if you want to help me, like, help me. There's no way I can don't tell I, you. Don't set how, me up. Like, how you want to set me up? How do you say that? There's I'm curious. no way like, I can say, babe, your wig is kind of off today and you not be taking offense. No, you just told me anything all right with your wig. <laughs> he not just told me that. You know, sometimes the wig turn brown as shit. I don't know. I'll be trying to help. Bro, I did my little got to be spray on my little stuff. You just said it. Girls be like, what wig? Uh, that one? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, that one right there. Because you talking about. Just letting wig. the public know. That, oh, no. Nah. But yeah, I just feel like, I don't know. I just feel like it's hard to tell y'all. Because y'all is crazy. So do you feel like it's not hard to tell y'all? Like Definitely not. You don't think so? What what what's the worst thing a girl ever told you that you needed to do? Like has a girl ever said like, you know, you kind of need a anything? Yeah, as, as far as like upkeep. What? Oh, upkeep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like anything. Oh, worse. I mean, whatever you're oh, about man. to go. The girl told me I ain't as nasty as I thought. I, was. <laughs> <laughs> I had to take that one on the chin. <laughs> I'm like, damn. I mean, okay. <laughs> she was like, boy, you ain't that. Right. Yeah, you think you're crowd in, in the car. You ain't as a freak as you think you're like, sheesh. Damn, okay. F- my ego. <laughs> like, god damn. Damn. That's a savage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean. That was, so that's why you be acting the way you do now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but nah. And yeah, girls don't tell me. Like, what else? Give me another one. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure down the line somebody had to tell me my breast thing. I don't know. I'm I'm just assuming. <laughs> I don't know. I, that had to been done. Um, but you did, you can't recall, huh? You can't recall though. But that's what, no, I can't that's recall. my point because I feel like <clears throat> I feel like people be so scared to hurt people's feelings that they don't really they deal with a lot of things like male and female. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's just a male versus female. I think there's just some things like people probably want to say, but it's like I don't hurt your but feelings. To answer your question though, just because like because. Just because somebody might say, yo, you stink, I might not deem it as, like, that bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I went to, when you asked me, first thing I think of about, because that would hurt my feelings. But if you bro, tell me so, I don't, I'm not, if I don't look up the part, I wouldn't hurt, that wouldn't, that wouldn't necessarily hurt my feelings. But it's the way you say things, right? I literally said the other day, my doctor, my daughter want, likes Dr. Broner, so she gets the peppermint. If you know Dr. Broner's, you know, is that, you know. So I'm like, oh, that smell good. I said, Jay had got it one time, but it's lavender. I was like, I ain't like it because it threw my pH off. Jay was like, so it stank. <laughs> I said, bro, I said it threw my pH off. He said, so you trying to say it stank? I'm like, no. I'm it make your, your vagina stink. <laughs> <laughs> no what? I said <laughs> it throws your pH off. I said, it stank. I might go, it stank. <laughs> 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 Come here, smell. I said, bro. Sm- smell like. So, <laughs> my point is, I feel like that's like what I would say, right? Like, no, like, so for example. But, but you know, I like I like it having a little smell sometimes. What are you talking about? So, that's a compliment for me. What are you talking about? Because I don't, I don't want to smell like, no, nah, I got to smell like a little something. What are you talking about? A little something. What are you talking about? So, I'm saying that's not, a, that's a, that's not, that's wild. But uh, my point to say that is, I think there's a way to tell people stuff, right? Like, if somebody was like, I don't know, you stink. It's like, you know, like... I'm like, I would damn, just, for real? I was just like, you, know, you smell, you know, you might did you use deodorant today, you might little, need a little extra. See, that's that bullshit. Don't do that to me. Because yeah, now you're you assuming you use deodorant. Like, I'd rather you be like, yo, bro. Nah, but I can tell if you musty, like, if you musty, I'm going to be like, like, you know, you did you put on deodorant? You might, you know what I'm saying, touch up on that before we go in here because I don't want but you yeah, to But yeah, I'm going to get a... I'd rather you say I stink than ask me that I put but on I deodorant like and I did. You stink. Or if you didn't, I would just be like, all right, well, you smell a little messy. You just put on some more, go wash up in your arms. Like, I'm like, that's the type of straightforward. I'm not, I'm not gonna be like, you stink. <laughs> that's why. Man, I ain't gonna lie to you. Smell a little funky down there. You might that's have to go fix that. That's what you just said. No, I'm saying. Bae. I did didn't you, use did the you, word funky. Bae, bae, though. All right, bet. Bae, bae, you washing pussy today? <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> bae, you washing pussy today? Bae, you washing pussy today? Jay, what? <laughs> smell like a, like a filter fish. <laughs> But you want Yo, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, just picture like no. Like, let me like... whisper yeah. <laughs> come here, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> babe, 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 you you wash your pussy today? 
Oh my god! You can be like, boy, what? You don't take anything serious? No, I'm serious. So like, what I would like. Right, so, okay, so how how so you would rather just be say like you stay? Yeah. Why would it's you say like, you take a shower? Babe, your pussy stink. <laughs> yeah, like babe, just babe, stink. Go take a shower. Babe. But you gotta get in a shower, girl. Mm-hmm. Well, I probably just joke it like, bro, what the fuck you got going on? And I would be like, yo, what's going on? And you'd be like, what? Like, girl, you don't smell that? Like, I smell it. Like, you gotta smell oh it. Oh my god. Like, I don't know. Like, Alex, what's an appropriate way to tell your partner something? Mm. You the woman, you gotta tell us. I was gonna say that's no, I'm saying, but on Because you can tell me how I think. I just feel like that's not I mean, I feel like it also does depend on the dynamic of your relationship. Facts. Like certain relationships, I done seen people, they be joning. Like mm-hmm. I'd be like, mm-hmm. how are y'all even in a relationship? Cause they be going on each other. So for them, they like, might just say it directly. Got a perfect dynamic, I think. Well, sometimes I heard of a shit girl still, but like you act like you've never came like, Jay, don't why are you wearing that with that? Facts. But I can't do that for to you. You gonna cry. Oh my god. I'll that's do that to true. Amaya, be like, bro, what are you doing? No, but I'm I can't not. do that to you like, what? No, no I'm not going now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go. You said I, I don't have nothing to wear. Bro, just change it, bro. No, like, I'm going to tell you why. Because I'll be like, did this look good? He's like, it's cool. Does it look good or not? It's cool. Like, does it look good? Like, I mean, you can wear it, but it's cool. Bro, does it fucking look because good? Because if I said no, you can be like, see, that's why I want to go. Now you guessing. Now you guessing. And I won't say I won't go. I would just go change. And then, yeah, I might be like, I don't want to wear, so I'm not going. <laughs> right. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you lying. You said, bitch, just lying through the skin of your teeth. Nah, I whatever, but. Nah, I mean, this is this is perfect because, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's hilarious. But uh, I remember when, I think it was Kevin Hart, essentially. He was talking way? about, like, as he continued to get busy. And more work, and his wife was getting busy, and they had children. Like to keep things fresh, like they had to schedule a lot of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like including intimacy, like sexual, I mean, outside prayer, like mm-hmm. all of okay. these things to keep their relationship fresh. I never thought about scheduling prayer. That was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. But like you know, at nighttime, we will schedule we'll before we go to bed. Oh. We're we're gonna pray. This week, I'm on tour. When I get back, sex on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And that for me, I was like, dang, like. But to keep the relationship <laughs> fresh, he was talking about these are the things, boundaries that they had to set in place so that the intimacy didn't die right. out. So I was talking to my friend about this. I won't say no names. And he was saying he was having some some issues with his lady about like just sex. And I'm like, bro, you should schedule it. And I got this from um, Kev on stage and his wife. Mm. And uh, Kev on stage, uh, mm. I don't know the ex names mm. about his wife's name, but so basically. That's Kev on stage. He was saying that, <clears throat> see, that's so dope when they got matching names. But, um, but uh, yeah, that that rock looked nice, right? So I need a band. So I anyway, my name. I can't afford a band right now. So even when we get married, you're not gonna get a band. But all anyway, right, well, I just need the name. All right. So anyway, what I was saying was, they were saying like they had to schedule like sex time is in the morning, mm. because once the day is started, yeah, it's too busy. It's, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? And by the time you're done, it's like it's so, it's tiring. Right. So yeah. I understand sch- scheduling sex because mm. yo, we we do have to do this. This is. Marriage is still a, a like I don't want to say a job, but it's still a responsibility. It's a it's an obligation. You know what I'm saying? So we should be able to schedule. If we're going to schedule things for our kid, why can't we schedule things for us? You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I think it might sound ups, absurd or out of the ordinary, but I mean, these are the things that we got to do to keep our relationship. Because right. if you don't, she gonna be scheduling big dick time with somebody <laughs> else. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like shit, <laughs> like. <laughs> You better get your... Yo, big dick time is insane. Hey, you better that get your big time hey, with you. Yo. Because if you don't get it with you, she going to schedule it with somebody else and you really ain't going to like it. So shit. Oh my gosh. You're hey. acting a nuisance. Babe, every, it's it? a delivery time. Okay. When you look at the numbers, they got <laughs> what's the, they got tracking numbers. So <laughs> shit, you better schedule your dick time, your pussy time, I'm just saying. My bad. I agree. I think the older I get, like I just posted on my story the other day that I'm at the age where everything goes on my calendar. Mm. Doesn't matter what it is, even spending time with my friends, everything. So why not with my partner? Because we are so busy all the time, moving. Bless you. (coughs) Bless you. Voice trying to give out on me for real now. We are so busy with everything else. We just really don't have time for a lot of things, including us sometimes. You get what I'm trying to say? 
And I feel like it would just put some pressure on keeping it. Because, you know, sometimes in my head, I'm like, yeah, like tonight, I'm trying to do something. Then I get to tonight, I'm like, yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, I'm tired. The baby don't wear me out. The kids don't wear me out. Everything yeah. don't wear me out today. I'm tired. Maybe tomorrow. But if you put it on your schedule, it's almost like a guaranteed time to follow. Like, if that makes sense, like, I'm doing everything to remember this is, has to get done later. It's like anything else, like my appointments, my doctor's appointments, my schedule for whatever I have going on. It's the same thing. So as I get older, I feel like it's more, I'm more compelled to do it. When I was younger, I, I think I looked at it like, huh? Yeah. What you mean? But like the older I get and the more busy my schedule gets and I realize how I have very little time for so many things, it makes sense. Like, so get, I daily, like I, I feel like I, I don't like it, but to keep the structure, I think it's necessary. Go so get your phone real quick. Mm-hmm. Schedule. Okay. Mr. Meat Tom. <laughs> What? <laughs> Mr. Meat time. Meat or me? Meat. Meat. Mr. Meat. I'm going to put a steak. Mm-hmm. What day? Tonight. <laughs> uh, I forgot my bad. What? You forgot? <laughs> hey. You're still in prison. No, it's, you know, we can work around it. Mr. Meat time. I don't like Bloody Mary, but I don't like it. Wasn't talking about that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Put that mug in there. Mr. Do <clears throat> time when? Tonight, gang. What time? Oh. You said. Yeah, did you no, know? no, don't worry about it. I'm going to put it Keeping it fresh, man. What? <laughs> so, Alex, uh, y'all done, y'all done, y'all done, <laughs> done showed so, live. Exa- go ahead. <laughs> but long story short, I seen another couple. Who kind of did the same thing. Um, but they did, like, they set their calendar for the month mm. as well. So they they had a date night. So they would schedule their calendar, like, out. Or, like, one Friday is a date night. Mm. One Friday is, like, a um, family night. Another Friday is Mr. Meat night. Another, another Friday is, like, they would schedule it out. Damn, so like once a once month? a month? God, like, God damn. damn. No, 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 but, <laughs> no, 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 no. Another no, Friday is. No, no, I mean like, but date night, same. I'm just saying like they would just schedule it out. That's I mean, my point. I got a question for you. Yeah. And for all the women that might be in this situation. Or maybe not. How does a woman schedule or keep it fresh or schedule dates when she, I guess when her partner is the one that's they hated the house, I guess. Hmm. Great question. I mean, I feel like, I don't know. A part of me feels like, because we kind of are in that situation now, right? Where you're holding a lot of the finances right now. And I be wanting to schedule shit, but I kind of have to let you know what I'm trying to schedule. But like, there'll be times I kind of maybe want to surprise you with something or whatever. So it's kind of hard. So I actually haven't fully figured it out because it kind of doesn't make sense to a degree because it's like, this is no longer on me at this second. It's still on you kind of, but it's, you know what I mean? But I think for you, I don't think it matters on the finances. It's just you don't have the time to do it. So it's kind of like on me to kind of mm. plan it at least so that we could do it. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's hard, though, too, because, like, depending on the financial situation, like, for example, right now, you express that you just lost your job. And, like, you know, I just had the baby. So we're kind of in a weird space right now. So it's, like, a part of me, like, wants to do, you know, but, but it's, like, just wait. Like, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a second. But I think that's where creativity may come in. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, a financial outing. Maybe just playing something soft like a movie night mm. you know make it sexy like whatever you know so it's it's that i'm still trying to fully unwind and unravel and if anybody has some tips and trades like throw them out there you know because i'm sure other people want to know too <clears throat> would you do you think it's too formal to like have a shared calendar like if you knew or too invasive in a sense to know everything Hell no i think that was because i was trying like, to get her to I did it share a calendar. Know, first of all, I did it before I had a whole app. Jay never accepted it. And I told him three times I accept it. And then you never accepted it. I put mm. all you and Amaya stuff on the damn calendar. So stop it. 
Wait, I don't know if you said I you did. try to get shot. No, I, no, I was saying I asked you to like yeah. have my calendar before. Mm-hmm. Like that, I think that I didn't came with me. Yeah. I didn't say that you you did anything wrong. I was like, mm-hmm. I'm for that. I think I introduced the. So I would into them terms. I actually need to do that again. Like redo that. I feel like since I had the baby, like I've been kind of like trying to. So we had a baby, and then we just moved. So it was just like a lot of different transitions. So I'm trying to restructure. Like the whole house. It like, depends on what was you. Yeah. I don't think it's too invasive. I, I need yeah, it. To I be don't honest. think it's invasive. Shit. But like the thing is, like Jay also has to like remind me of what he has because he has like interviews shit that pops up last minute. People that come in town want to do interview, whatever. And he be like, oh, oh, oh. So he's kind of hard to keep up with sometimes because his it, it could be, yo, you in town? Hey, yo, Jay, I'm in town. It's like a random day time oh what you about to do i'm trying to do an interview when in the next hour it's like you know what i'm saying so it kind of but it's still other things that can go in the calendar nothing less yeah i'm with that all of that shit like all of that stuff that we used to i don't know joke about back in the day you have my location see my calendar yeah yeah, yeah. Have password to my phone uh, like that shit don't yeah but i also <laughs> feel like it does at one it adds a, a layer of trust um mm-hmm. but then um i think it makes it easier you know, yeah, that's how I look at because it. You, make it you can literally look at my calendar and see all that I got going on. Yeah. Now, it is a responsibility and you, that you have to keep your calendar up to date. And I'm not the best at keeping it up to yeah. date sometimes. So, but I, I often thought about that, especially as y'all continue to grow and you in your respective spaces, like to to do those type of structures. And it's kind of weird because some people hate looking at marriage and relationship like a business, but sometimes the, to whom much is given, much is required, yeah. right? And if you're required to do a lot of stuff, it is a practical way to look at relationship to keep mm-hmm. the intimacy. In regards to intimacy, though, um, as you all have evolved from boyfriend to fiance to going into marriage, what are ways that y'all feel like y'all... Y'all don't got to get too in detail. Yeah. Please. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. But keeping if you that know. aspect of your relationship fresh, please spare me. But as you evolve, without that detail, I'm talking about intimacy. Bro, ask intimacy me. doesn't mean yeah, sex. Ask the damn question. But yeah. What was the question? What was the question? How, did y'all, how did y'all keep your <laughs> intimacy fresh as y'all evolve from boyfriend oh, we didn't. to fiance? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be honest right now. Baby, we like the house. <clears throat> I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, uh, um, I feel like right now the house is so busy. We're still in the process of like restructuring. Mm. So right now, like, there's no. I, we don't really have intimacy, but I will say like the the house is. It feels like light. Like if that makes sense, it's not like tension through the house where it's like. This is the first time I feel like it's not like a frustration, like tension, like uh, I'm sexually frustrated or I'm lacking. We're lacking intimacy and we're not doing this. We're not going out on dates. So I'm just so irritated with you. I think there's a mutual. Re- you feel that way? Hmm? You feel that way? I'm asking. Hello? It's Do you twirling. feel that way? No, I mean, I want to have sex. Yeah, but I'm, are you frustrated about it? No, I'm not. Are you bothered about it? Like, are you, like, annoyed, like, with me in any way or annoyed with the situation? No, I'm not annoyed. I want to have sex, though. <laughs> I'm not annoyed. I'm not frustrated. I think, like you said, it is, it's, think, like, it's, I, it's like around the house. Yeah, it's chill. Because <clears throat> I feel like, I feel like we've been in spaces before that, like, if we were, like, in and out like this and we were lacking some type of intimacy or anything, it'd be like some frustration in the house. I feel like we've had that before. What we probably can't have this conversation right now because you, you divorce. What I feel like, yo, you just don't do me right, bro. Because when it's on me, what? that's when the frustration become in the house. What do you mean? When when the ball is in my court and you feel like I'm not having sex with you, or I don't Why know, do you, you feel sexually, like, you feel like it's in your court right now. Well, I think it's in your court right now, but I'm not like upset with you. Like you got the DUI and like. I'm not like so. You, so what you when you mean when was it in your? <clears throat> I don't know. Like just when we don't like it's the times where you be like yo you don't even. I'm like baby, it's not like that. Like bro, I'm fucking working. I'm tired. You be like whatever. Like you got like you don't want me or some shit like that. Okay, 
but vice versa when so you feel like because it's in my court you don't have frustration that's why there's no frustration but when it's like when i'm the one when i'm the the reason when you're the reason you feel like i have frustration yes can i clarify on what when i say intimacy i that's why i was saying i don't gotta get into details because when i think of intimacy it doesn't necessarily mean sex mean sex so getting close i want to have sex right like I think oftentimes when we talk about intimacy, it's just that Thanks, aspect Alex. of it. Help me but, out. But now, I mean, from a guy, I mean, we know what we want. Mm-hmm. And that is a lot of it. But when I, as I continue to evolve and and grow in my manhood and understanding, like, oh, I can talk, all I can the tell different you about things. It. So, so I'm not the most affectionate person. Okay. But I be wanting it. So, like, I don't know when the last, like, my girl, like, she used to be the one that like, no, nah, not really. What? I be wanting Shadi to be all over me for real, mm. but like she be want me to be all over her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, but hold on. In my scope of things, I used to be all over Jay. Yeah, I was going to say that, yeah. but because Jay's not as overly affection, I've kind of toned it down because I don't know. It's not like a. It's not like a thing like oh well you don't do it to me but at the same time is that it, reciprocation like it, it, it's not even reciprocation i just feel like if that's not who you are then that's not who you are why so i in my head it wasn't that like i feel like because you don't give it then you don't want it either no mm-hmm. like a love language in a sense yeah and i'll be one so, I my girl be all over me like so like it was weird to me that like sometimes you like sometimes but you've displayed that you don't like it all the time like sometimes you be locked in on shit i come you like hold on bae i'm like all right Cause I'll be working, and Shadé would come and try to have a conversation about something not even like on me, like on my lap or like kissing me. She'll come and try to have a conversation about what she got going on, and because I'm not talking to her back, she'll think that I don't want to be bothered or something. I feel like it's been in other moments. Like I feel like I literally would come lay up under you or try to sit on your lap. You'd be at the desk, you'd hug me for two seconds. I'm like, all right, hold on, babe. I'm like, okay, cool. So be- that don't mean I don't want you there. I'm still working. I know that, but I know that. That's why we're able to work as a couple. If I felt like you just didn't, you know what I mean? I just know that you're not an overly affectionate person. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? So I just let it kind of be. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? So, but I feel like even that's not where intimacy stops because I feel like intimacy can also be conversation. I was going to ask you. You know what I'm trying to say? So that's why it never, it, it didn't really, like, even though I'm an affectionate person, it didn't bother me that you, it well, used to bother me before. And let me clarify that. But it stopped bothering me because I knew it wasn't that you didn't want me or desire me or any way or wanted to share intimacy with me. It just I just felt like it wasn't who you was. But we would have a conversation. We would have, yeah. con- you know what I'm saying? Like, we would, you know, like, almost like uh, sapiosexual, you know what I'm saying, in certain ways. Or, like, we shared a lot of other moments. And then when we are intimate, we share really great intimate moments. So it didn't, like, it doesn't, like, bother me in that aspect. Just like when we're not having, even in terms of sex, when we're not having sex, it doesn't bother me. OD, because remember, I did say mention, like, when I was pregnant. Like, you know what I'm saying? We weren't having sex like that. But I also understood the dynamic. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, sometimes, like, our household is very, very busy. And I think, like, people need to understand that. Like, you're not, like, devouring each other every two seconds. It's just not possible. Now, I'm not saying that we can't have more sex or we can't work on having, like, higher forms of intimacy. What I'm saying is when the lack is there, it happens in different seasons. Sometimes the sex drive is high. Sometimes it's low. Sometimes it's, like, at a, you know, moderate rate. But, like, it changes depending on what's happening in the season. I feel like this season has been very, very, very full. Like, this isn't we, you know what I mean? My labor was crazy. Then we moved. And we've had people at the house, your mom, my mom, and then it's just like it's just been like your work like it's it's been so much that it's been hard to kind of coordinate but i don't feel like that's a forever thing i feel like it's a seasonal thing yeah no i definitely would say like i i but again that's why i was saying like i feel like when a ball isn't like when it's on me i get it's more frustrating but like because it's not on me at the time i don't think it's like a i don't think that's fair and is it when i'm the cop reason you be upset yeah when I was pregnant, I came to you multiple times about how I felt like you were neglecting me in that area, but I never treated you in no way. I let it go. 
like multiple times. But that hurts your, that hurts your feelings. Really it well. hurt my feelings, and I expressed that to you. But it hurt my feelings because I was pregnant, and my body <clears> was changing, and I felt like you were there and you weren't making it be any better. You know what I'm trying to say? And then we would talk about it. You would reassure me that it wasn't me. And I would let it go multiple times. I never dragged it out. But you came to me after your pregnancy and said that my this is something that you really, you even mentioned about yeah. having this conversation on the podcast, but you wasn't ready yet because yeah. it's something that really bothers you. So It did, but I'm saying like I didn't carry any tension with it. We had a great time through the pregnancy and not, we carried that through the pregnancy. Yeah, it ain't. It ain't. Yeah, that's, but that's what I'm but saying. But it, it came up multiple times. Yes, because I was choosing to have the conversation with you, but it didn't come up because I was just being carrying tension and being mean about it i came to you all i'm saying is it hurt your feelings and that's fine but when you i feel like you're saying the only reason why there's no tension in the house is because it's in your court but i literally handled that super gracefully even though i felt like it was something that hurt my feelings so okay okay maybe i'm not saying it in a way for you to understand but uh, i'm not um, saying that you were like absurd or like super angry but you did have a problem with it I express that it hurt my feelings. Yeah, and it was times where it hurt your feelings and your frustration came out. It might not have been the worst way, but it came out. Because you weren't really giving me a full so, explanation. Fair. So because but it, that, but it wasn't like I was carrying the tension. Like if I'm coming to you and talking about it, I don't feel like that equates to you're just carrying tension and whatever. Cause we're having like I'm trying to have the conversation with you. That's what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say? If I wasn't trying to have the conversation with you and I'm just like mm-hmm. Da, da, da. You ain't eating it. I wasn't doing that. I was letting it be. And when the time were permit, the times were permitting, I was trying to have an open conversation about it so that we could speak about it so I could understand how you felt through the process. And I felt like we had some good conversations out of it a couple of times. You know what I'm trying to say? That's that's what I mean. Like, and I feel like that doesn't carry tension if we're finding understanding in it. You know what I'm trying to say? That that's what I mean. Like, I don't feel so when you say when it's in my court, I feel like that I feel like that's not fair because. When I was in my court, no, it wasn't either. And I was coming to you, you know what I'm saying? Respectfully with com- communication about it, open communication about it to allow you to feel and, you know, express your concerns or et cetera. Same. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Russ. Right. What you saying? I said what I said. No, but you like, you making his face like what I'm saying. That makes no, sense. I know it sounds like you ex- had frustration and you okay. was upset. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. But um, right. so basically, you don't have frustration when it's time for this, and I do. That's not what I'm saying. This particular time, all I'm saying is, um, maybe because it's light. Like I'm like it's just it's. I want to have sex, but it's not like bothering me because I know the reason and I understand the reason, and I'm okay with that. Right. So then, okay. So say you think I was frustrated. For me, I was pregnant. It wasn't light. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. And. I was trying to have a com- conversation about it. So if it wasn't like for you, do you think you would have handled it the same way? But because Probably you're saying not. it's light. I just think, I just think, I just think. Understand, but what about somebody who is not light to and they don't understand? Fair, and that's fair. I just think most, not most. I think a lot of times when it when it is because of me, it's not light because <clears throat> whatever position you're in is for it not to be light. If that makes sense. Like, is is I don't want to say never, but most of the times it's not going to be like on on you because it's not light for you. Like you, you deem it as super important. I do too, but I I just think I'm understanding. I don't know. I just feel like you're taking it when you say it like that. You, you're making it seem like you're the only understanding one in the relationship because that's how it's coming off. It might be coming off like that, but when it comes to this, I think I believe I'm more understanding in this situation. I don't agree, but okay. So, I mean, I guess this drives a, a. I mean, we don't have to go down that, have that conversation, but um, you touched on a very interesting point. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that have probably gone through things similar in that nature, mm-hmm. like especially with pregnancy. Um, women going through, women go through a whole lot of changes. Um, I, one of my friends, any day now, honestly they might be popping out the my nephew might be popping out and you know the body changes you know mm-hmm. ex- emotions all of those things and he was kind of having a conversation about affirming with that and you know we we're having a conversation about intimacy but like 
really affirming your significant other during that journey and that process. And we talked, you, you all talked about it before where you're talking about the emotions of pregnancy, um, but kind of uh, something that he did mention was that stress because it's like, where do you go as a man when your your wife is going through all of these changes to release your stress and creating an outlet? But then as well for you, Sade, having healthy outlets to be able to express the frustrations that you may have or stress, you know what I mean, during those seasons in your life. Um, So how did you all, because obviously you're here now Mm -hmm. and you have had conversations and again, Shout out to you all for being able to have the growth and the conversations that we have on this podcast time and time again. But like having and creating healthy outlets, I think is another form of keeping things fresh. But go ahead. Question. That whole conversation, can we say that for another episode? Because shout out, like it's three of us though, because if y'all all with me, it's fine. But like, I feel like that's a great conversation. And we kind of wanted, to, I know, it was, when we, especially specifically sex and pregnancy, um, that's a great conversation, but I don't think Sade no, it's fine. is up to have it right now because her voice. Okay. I want people to like, cause that's a great, it's something that bothered her, something that like, I think she would like, like really like, has some good points on, but okay. I mean, I, I might be wrong. I mean, my, my voice is doing what it's doing, so. So you, you good to have it? Mm. I'm just curious. I, I, just, I, just, I mean, I, it, it really, like, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know what to answer, to be honest. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, we I feel like we already kind of had to get here. Oh. Like, no, I don't know. I mean, but just, I mean, like, I would like to wait, like, at the same time. Yeah. But I mean, we don't know, have to talk about here, it right like, now. But, like, I I mean, his question was good. It was you know, great. I thought I was, I, that's why I was like, I don't know. Really like, how are we going to, like, tie this in? Like, what are we going <laughs> to, what are we doing here? Like, how do we wrap? Like wrap this up. <laughs> All right, guys, <laughs> great episode. Nah, bro, like, nah. All right, so I mean, you the could question was, I feel like you could keep it in. Yeah, so the raw, question, but, basically, um, the question was about um, the outlets yeah. that we used, I guess. Yeah, I mean, do you want me to answer? Yeah, go ahead. It? go ahead. Um, you know, I got a, I got close girlfriends, so you know, and I got really close mom friends already. So you know, I talked about it to you know my sister, and um, you know, she she went through the same thing, so. It's actually a lot of women who go through it. You know what I'm saying? And I think that it is definitely a topic that we can keep for another time. But I do want to say, since we're here, that a lot of women actually go through a disconnect with their partners with when they're pregnant sexually. Um, and it's heavy simply because, you know, we're going through a period of stage where we really can't recognize ourselves anymore. And, like, at that time, we are in dire need of feeling some normalcy. Like somebody, you know, like not somebody, our partner to make it us feel like, nah, you still the same person. You know what I mean? Even though we're not, and we abs- essentially we know that, but it just to feel like we're still attractive or they still look at us the same to some capacity is very, very important through that time because we are already in our mind worried about so much, worried about what's going on inside our bodies, you know, what's happening. And, you know, all the there's so many things that come with pregnancy on the hormonal change, whether it's your your like for example like little things like um, your body odor picks up. So I was taking hella showers. I'm using different perfumes and um, lotions because I want to make sure I'm fresh every day. But it's something that like people don't talk about in pregnancy, and it's like you gotta stay fresh like all the time because you're unnecessarily hot. You're sweating like you know what I'm saying. It's just so much. So. You're going through all these things, and I think I did a great job just through carrying myself through my pregnancy of just keeping myself fresh and keeping my hair done and trying to make sure I looked good so I could feel good. So I think that last piece, it was like I was doing all the work I could with myself to feel good, look good, kept myself fresh, kept my hair done. You know what I'm saying? And the next piece would have been that connected it would have been my partner just kind of like affirming like, nah, you know what I'm saying? You kind of still, and not that Jay didn't. He compliment that I was pretty all the time, but I could just kind of tell, like, and I like I could tell that Jay just didn't look at me as a shy baby when I wasn't pregnant, I, and I knew that, and I kept saying, I think I was in a dire need for him to just admit, like, I was like, just admit that you just can't look at me that way, pregnant, and I I could have accepted that. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, so 
because he wouldn't say that. Like, I was just like, bro, just say that because I can understand that as a person. I'm human. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you just put on 40 pounds, you get what I'm trying to say? And I would say that, like, just imagine if you put on 40 pounds and it's in your weight, in your stomach, you would want your girl to still make you feel like something. Like, you know what I'm saying? You would want, like, or if you just got diagnosed with some, you know, woo-woo and your body changed, you know, your hair fell out, you would want your partner, like, please just still look at me like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm... I'm something. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to get him to understand that. And it's not that he didn't understand it. I just think, I don't know. Still to the second, I told him the reason why it was touchy for me to talk about because I still didn't I still didn't really have a full reason. You know, he had put it on work. But after I was pregnant, he had the same job. You know what I'm trying to say? So I was still trying to figure out, like, okay, you still working. Like, yeah, like now you lost your job. But that was just like last week. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I had a baby for two and a half months. You know what I'm saying? So when I first had a baby... You still was working. You know what I'm trying to say? So it was like, I didn't understand that. And quite frankly, Jay's always had a plethora of jobs. So it's not like, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't, I ain't really understanding. I think I, st- I still didn't understand. But in the back of my mind, I understand that it's completely normal for a man to kind of, it's not not look at you the same, but I, I'm, look at me now from when I was pregnant. Like, I'm, I look like two different people. Like, not two different people. I was still... You know what I'm saying? But in pregnancy, like, when you want to feel the most beautiful because you're carrying a life, like, you know what I'm trying to say? I just feel like, you know, we kind of, like, lost and got lost in translation a little bit there. So, but, you know, I had, the outlets I had I, was my own understanding. You know what I'm saying? I was heavy in prayer at, through my pregnancy, too. So, I was heavy in my bag just trying to, like, keep myself grounded because I was going through a lot of changes within my body and your mind goes with your hormonals. I was doing the work to try to stay in a positive mindset because I didn't want nothing to affect my baby. I was like, no, stay happy, stay positive. So I did a lot of work with that. So it didn't. That really affects, sorry. Yeah. I I didn't know that, that, that your mental. Oh yeah. Affects the. the, Yeah. Mental. Your baby is attached to your nervous system. So whatever my nerves are feeling, my baby feels. Mm. So I was heavily on, like, I don't want to feel nothing abnormal. Like, I need to feel calm, whatever, which is why I am I heavily believe that Alani is the way she is. She's, like, super, like, lax. Of course, if she's hungry or is going through something, but she's a super lax baby. But I, And she, you can tell she just feels love. Like, she, she's a love baby. But I feel like, you know, I made sure that, like, that was her environment inside, and I try to make sure that outside, like, and... And that's why she also is attached to me in ways because I calm her nervous system because I don't want her like stress. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? And I was, I was, I've been like that since she's been in my womb. Um, just her having the calmest environment inside and outside, you know what I'm trying to say? Which is why I think she didn't want to come out. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? She was content. She was cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? There was nothing going on in there. She wasn't stressed out. Yeah. So. No, I feel you. No, I, I mean, you know, when you was pregnant, it was, it was a few things, you know, in the beginning, we were dealing with some things. And that was that, but like towards the middle and the end, as as your stomach got bigger, it was like um, different for me, mm-hmm. right? And I don't know, it was hard. It was it was like it just like part of me felt like it was weird. Like I didn't want to like I don't know. It's like I couldn't do it how we usually do it. So it's just different, and you know, like when things are different. Um, like, we kind of, like, shy away from what's different, right? So, like, it was just different. And another part of it, it just was, I mean, <laughs> it wasn't that I wasn't attracted to you. It just, I I don't know how to explain it. Like, I really, I can't even put the my mind, I can't even put my thoughts to words, to be honest. Because, like, for me, it was just like, man, I'm just trying to have a healthy baby, too. Right? I just want to, my focus is on doing what we got to do to have this baby, baby as healthy as we can. And, like... I don't know. I just didn't, wasn't associating sex with anything. I just, I, I just couldn't. I don't know. It's hard to explain because, like, still to this day, I just can't. It wasn't that I wasn't was attracted crazy. to you, though. It just it was crazy because, like, in my last week, I was trying to get the baby to drop down, and I was really frustrated with Jay because we went to the doctor, and the doctor was like, "Walk, have sex. These are all things that will bring the baby down." And Jay looked at me like, "Well, we could just have sex," and I was so irritated with him because I'm like, this whole time, like, now you want to have sex, like. You know what I'm trying to say? So, like, I don't know. I think it's definitely something, like, like I said, we, we, we should unpack it in another episode because, like, it's just so much more yeah. to it than that. But just to say, my outlet was my sister. 
you know, shout out to Paris, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's a great mom, and she's, you know, she understood, you know, a lot. And, you know, her and Diamond, shout out to Diamond, they really held my hand through that because it was hard for me, and I was also trying not to let it consume me in any way, you know what I'm saying? I had to still show up, you know, and, you know, feel my best. And um, due to me having outlets and prayer and my friends, I wasn't, like, letting it consume me, which is why I was able to, like, have conversation, like, yo, let's talk about it, like, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, like you said, like, some things, like, I could have let it, like, consume me and, then, like, didn't want to talk about it, like, just, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't really let it drag me to a point where, like, you know what? After pregnancy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bet, like, you know what I'm saying? Ooh. Um, but it's crazy because uh, there's actually a whole TikTok forum on it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was crazy because I was looking at it. It was just the reason why I think it's a separate co- conversation because it was so many women who were sad because their, par- their par- partner went and touched them while they was pregnant. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. Like, I didn't, I didn't feel sad about it. No, I did. I, it hurt my feelings, but I didn't feel sad about it. But I was like, that's how I knew it was just a sensitive topic because I was like, damn, this is like a common thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I was trying to just unpack the why, though. You know what I'm trying to say? So even when I hear you say, like, I, like, I don't really have an answer. It's crazy. Like, I feel like a lot of men might feel like that. You know what I'm trying to say? So I think it's just important to just talk about in general because clearly a lot of men feel like that. And I just I think it's just important to unpack the why. Like what is it? Where is it stemming from? I mean, I I, I do apologize. Well, I, I want to apologize if that like hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because I can mm-hmm. understand that. Like you put, you had some great examples. Like if something drastic happened to me, I would still want you to love me the same. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know. It wasn't that I didn't love you the same. I just again, I I I, I wish I had the words, but um, and this might not make it no better. But if I would have known that it it hurt you to that point, I would have made more of a conscious. But I told you. Yeah, I I, just, I still I just thought you just was like finding things to mm-hmm. be honest. To be honest, I just thought she was mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you you was pregnant hormones. I thought she was just like just having issues to just be mad at. To be real, wow. I didn't understand yeah, the magnitude answer. of the pain. You know what I'm saying? Like I just didn't. I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like I uh and like because I want to give you closure, like. Yeah, I didn't feel, I didn't want to have sex, but it wasn't like, <clears throat> I don't know, like, it wasn't personal for me, if that makes sense. I don't know how to explain it. I really, I wish, I wish I could, because I, I I'm not lying, it's just, yeah, part of me wasn't as attractive because you was pregnant, but, but still, even still though, I think I told you this before, not, not making no excuses, yo, we see how we hang out, we drink, we, we party, we, a lot of things. I do feel like I lost a friend when you was pregnant. When you was pregnant, mm. and I can't say that. So a lot of times when we are having sex or when we when we doing whatever, we're in like friend mode. We're like drinking, we're chilling, we're talking, we're like we're in friend mode. And I feel like I lost a piece of you when you were pregnant. Like you wasn't, we wasn't doing what we used to do. We couldn't drink. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't really going out at all. So all we had to do was. Be at home without problems. So what like problems that we have, like just anything, like the house problems, the, the 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 money problems, the whatever. And it's like, it's like, how can you really do an enjoyable act when you're surrounded by the problems all the time? What's I, the difference now? Like we, bro, we turning up right now. We drink, we we talking, we having podcasts. This like we talk about that sapiosexual thing. Like I don't think we had many sapiosexual moments during pregnancy. Like I, I, do you? Do would you? Do. I mean, I don't know. Like I feel like I don't know. Like it's crazy because like since we started the podcast again, I told you I was like I felt like I had a good pregnancy. Like overall, where it was just like I felt like it was simple, it was peaceful, whatever. So it's weird. Like when I hear you say like basically you weren't having a good time. No, but so it's like it almost made me feel like I was in it by myself. No, but just because we wasn't having a good just because we wasn't having a good time drinking and stuff don't mean that your pregnancy wasn't peaceful. But when I hear you say we weren't doing anything, we were just kind of at home with our problems. I'm trying to sit back and like I like I don't understand. But we wasn't doing anything. We wasn't going out. We wasn't like we not didn't. partying, but we were cooking out every other day. We were on the grill having fun at the pool, having people over. That's what I'm saying. Like when you say that I'm I'm still a little like it like makes me feel like we were living 
two separate lives at that time. I mean, in a way, we were, though. Yeah. Like, you were pregnant. You yeah, we could have cookouts. I wasn't. I was drinking. And then when I'm done, like, I can't just come hot more. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just. But you could have. Hmm. You know, um, something that I commonly hear, again, I'm the single friend that don't got no kids, mm-hmm. but everybody around me is like pregnant right. or married. And so I find myself in the place of hearing these conversations, but can't give no advice because I don't know nothing about it. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to play this role. I'm going to play that role in this situation. But uh, what I found in a lot, because one of my homeboys, he got married at 23. And I kid you not, Brett has had a kid every year since he got married That's in 2018. Wild. Brett got four kids. Shout out my brother, Peter, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, shout out my brother. Everybody and um, I just remember with the first child, he was like, uh, he had to overcome that. And please don't kill me for telling this story. I'm praying that mm-hmm. this is a safe space. But for the sake of this conversation, um, he was afraid of hurting the baby. And a lot of different stress factors and things of that nature that he was handling in preparation for the baby, that wasn't on his mind. And I wonder if that's something that's common with a lot of men is like we're so wrapped into preparing for when the baby arrives that we're not like we had the conversation of being present, but absent at the same time, like present physically, but absent emotionally, because there's so much things and not to take away from all the things that you're going through because you do mm-hmm. you're carrying the child and everything. But I feel like I just wonder as men, if we get so anxious without speaking it physically like what we're feeling that we're not able to even see like okay you brought the conversation to Jay, but like again he just mentioned in, in full transparency like he wasn't able to see the magnitude of it because of wherever your mind was but I remember in that particular instance he was just like bro my mind is like literally on the due date I don't know when that day is but like that's where my mind is right now and every day in between is just like a sprint to get to a destination that you don't even know what it's going to look like. Because mm-hmm. nobody can truly prepare you for par- uh, being a parent. And while <clears throat> this was the first child, his first child, and while you have already experienced it, I'm just curious to, with men in general, if this is something that everybody goes through. Because you talked about women. Um, and we don't have to get too much into the conversation. because too we late. No, I mean, we here. <laughs> but... But yeah, I was I, like, to be honest, like towards the end, like again, I'm, I'm trying to take accountability, but like, I also want to be real in my feelings too. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it was a lot. Yeah. Just because it was peaceful don't mean that it didn't come with anything. Like towards the end, you were tired, bro. Like you, like you didn't, how can I say this? And again, just listen with y'all hearts, if y'all can, if y'all can, you wasn't the most approachable sexually either. Though. Like it wasn't like you gave up, you gave off like this energy, like I want to get fucked. It was like it, it really wasn't like that. Like, you didn't give me that energy. You know what I'm saying? Like so, it was like I'm trying to deal with your emotions, your feelings, and like and so many other things as well. Because again, you can be you are str- you got a lot of things going on in your mind, and I'm just trying to I'm trying not to step on an egg. You know what I'm to be honest, right? So like. Sex was, like, the furthest thing away from me, to be honest. And, like, especially towards the end when, like, you was just frustrated. Like, yo, bro, like, this is the hardest part. Like, I'm I'm tired of carrying it. It's heavy. Like, you was, like, like, because I don't want to say complain. I don't want to say, like, no, I'm not trying to make a negative. I'm just trying to. She was going through a lot of things. Yeah, you were going through a lot. So, I'm, like, the, I'm trying to cater to you and be there for you in every way possible. And sex is literally, like, the furthest thing away from what I'm thinking about. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm trying to say like it wasn't personal because it wasn't, but I'm still understanding like your, your your frustration, your sexual frustration as well. So you said at the end, what about before that? In the beginning? We had, hey, practically it's a full 10 months, babe. Right. The first five months can be the beginning. Okay. If that's what you feel. Six through ten. What about it? Or six through what? Seven? Eight? Whatever. In the beginning, babe, I feel like 
Try not to like. It was just hard, Ray. What was happening in the beginning? Am I missing something? Mm. It was hard, Ray. What was hard? We were going through some things. What was going through? It's it's probably not for the podcast. Okay. I really don't even remember, so we can talk about it after the podcast because I really don't know what you're talking about. Okay. And that's fair. Y'all don't have to talk about it. We are we're gonna respect the fact that y'all say that the full conversation doesn't have to happen today. Um, but again, thank you all for sharing that and being vulnerable. Yeah, so but outside of that though, it, it was sounds like how opportunities and I didn't take offense. I definitely wanna take my responsibility for it. And um again, I just it was hard, man. It was hard for both of us. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just I just wasn't thinking about sex. And if that hurts you, I apologize and I and I didn't mean anything by it. But um I don't really there's nothing else I could like, you know what I'm saying? Like I wish I could say something that could give you closure in life and and um comfort for your feelings, but all I can do is just own it. You know what I'm saying? Like that wasn't what I was focused on at the time and it wasn't anything personal. I still love you. And I wanted everything to work out with our child. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What month did y'all get engaged? Sorry, just taking. June. How, how many months was that in? Two like eight? nine. What do you mean? Or eight. Eight months I was, in. I was, I was six months at our, at our uh, engagement. June? July? August? You had Alani in uh, August. Oh, I was seven months. Probably I'm Eight. Just, July, August, nine months, eight months. Only reason why I bring it up is just like, again, just thinking about the mindset of everything that y'all had a lot going on from the outside looking in. Because I'm just like thinking seven about because June, June to fifth. July, July to August, that's two and a half months. So I was about to seven months. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It, I only reason why I brought it up again is just to think about the the mindset, and it, and again, you're. You're thinking about three different things at the same time, which is kind of interesting uh, from the outside that uh, being a provider in the sense of, I mean, and you already were probably prepared to do that, but taking another step to become a husband, a father of another child and continue to do, and just evolving in the role that you're already doing as a provider in a sense. And I can understand I'm not trying to be an apologist or anything. Like, that is a lot. But then for me personally, because this is a growing experience for myself and I'm growing through having this conversation because I do hope to be a father one day, um, really trying to learn. And this could be a conversation for another time again, but, like, how to be present. Like, we literally continue to how to try to be present as best as possible for your significant other in that moment in time. And I believe that based off of what you're saying, you saw all of the other things and and I guess sacrifice, you saw it as a sacrifice for yourself, but then also it was a sacrifice for her because this is something that she wanted. So yeah, sex, I, but I, only thing I can do about that conversation is just apologize because that's what I'm saying. And honestly, bro, sex was the last thing on my mind. Like literally like, and I'm, I can't, I'm trying to be just empathetic with the conversation because it was like, I think I had two jobs at that time. I forgot when I lost my 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 first job. Like, I'm you gotta understand, bro. Like, I'm trying to keep these two jobs. Like, I'm not worried about sex. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like it's just just be honest. You feel me? Like, I just wasn't <clears throat> worried about sex at and no form of capacity. Like, if it was going to help her, like ease, like um, get Alani out because I know it was really frustrating for her. I was willing to do that because I seen how much pain and how frustrating that the end the pregnancy was. You know what I'm saying? So I was willing to do that because I wanted you to feel some comfort. You know what I'm saying? Like, just being honest. But outside of that, in the beginning, like I said, the beginning, we had some things that we was dealing with that, you feel me? But, like, for, towards the middle, it just, I just wasn't, I just, bro, I had a lot on my plate, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's That's just fair. a lot. And I think we talked about this because in one of the episodes, I, I said, 
as selfish as it make it sound, it's funny how like, you know, like when a woman would get pregnant, I feel like everybody like is concerned about the woman. And they should be because she's carrying a child. I'm not mad at that, but sometimes the man you feel overlooked. And it's like, yo, what about me? Right? Like, well, damn, like, my feelings is, doesn't matter because she's the one that's pregnant, so she can we talked about this in one of the episodes. I forgot the episode, but it's like everything is about her, right? And she would say everything is about the baby because people overlook her. And so I feel like at a moment, mm. we're both feeling the same because it's like, I'm like, yo, well, what about my feelings? Everything is justified because, you know, um, pregnancy hormones and X, Y, and Z. And I suppose just understand it, but like, damn, I, I got feelings too. You get what I'm saying? So in that moment, I just was dealing with a lot. Like, I was dealing with a lot. And it's hard to express that when your woman is pregnant. Like, I can't come to you and say I'm dealing with a lot and you pregnant. Like, even saying even saying it on a podcast, somebody somewhere is like, you couldn't be going through half of what she was going like it's a it's a lose lose conversation. So it's like I I was just dealing with what I was dealing with, how I was how how the best way I knew how. You know what I'm saying? So I was just just trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like I still to be you was pregnant, I still wanted some head or something. Like I wanted you to come meet, like, but you like, bro, I'm pregnant. Like it was uh, I think it was a uh, um I won't say power struggle, but I think that was part of it too, though. A culture shift, I think. Yeah, because like I, I want you to come, like, still be affectionate with me, but it's like you looking because you're pregnant for me to come and be that for you, but that never been me, right? So it just, it just, it, it was different for me, like you know what I'm saying? Because like, like you said, like that's never been me, you feel me? But I be wanting it from you. Make sense? Yeah, I think I'm just. I I think what's hard for me to understand that I hear what you're saying, but it's like you know I lost my you know I had lost a job whatever. So what's the difference now? Because you still just said I want to have sex. You just lost a job. You don't have neither one of them. We're going through money problems. So we're always in a stand a, a situation where it's some struggles. You get mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say. But now I'm not pregnant now. It but it's I want to have sex. You get what I'm trying to say. So like as a woman, like okay we had problems then. You didn't want to have sex, but we have problems now. You want to have sex, like make it was the only common, den- the only denominator, the only not even denominator, the only factor there is that I was pregnant then and I'm not pregnant now. Yeah, but like, I'm, so I'm it also just feels like I don't know. Like, I'm trying just, to give you some affirmation yeah. or confirmation that that was a part of it too, though. That because you were yeah. pregnant and and that did have and I that did play a part of it too. Like you, yeah, I'm, I like, understand that your body was changed just, and it was I just different want, from you. I, I just needed to be clear, like that's hard for a woman to process like that's like if you again i keep using the analogy of you because god forbid the tables don't turn you get what i'm trying to say but if if it was to ever turn and the only common name denominator was you and how you looked you know what i'm saying how and what you were carrying it's the only reason why i didn't want to touch you or do something with you like that would make you feel away that would make anybody feel away and it would make me feel like well don't t- don't want me now like i could literally easily turn around i'm like well don't want me now because i was I'm not going to be pregnant forever. That's like a, something that women say all the time. I'm not going to be pregnant forever. I'm going to lose the weight. I'm going to get back to me. I'm not a person who loses myself in my like uh, in pregnancy and my kids. I always, uh, I care about how I look. I care about her. I'm, I'm not going to be that way forever. So when you're not there forever and now the table, like when it goes back to like, oh, I'm, it's like, it's almost like back then they want me. Now they now I'm hot. They all on me. Don't want me. You know what I'm trying to say? And I'm not saying that's how I'm moving, but that's how it could feel. Like you ain't want me then, don't want me now. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be honest. Like I hear what you're saying. And I empathize with you too. However, I, I only can walk in my shoes. And that right there is the same reason why in my head I was like, would you even want to carry another baby? Like I thought about that before because it's like I don't want to go through that again. I don't want to be disconnected in my relationship again. I don't want to. And women think like that. Like it's like, do I want to deal with that again to feel like I'm carrying a child, whatever. And now this is happening. And, I, you know, I, we having a power struggle because I'm carrying a baby. You feel away. I feel away. It's like nobody wants to go through that shit again. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like and it, it, it and it's the true factor. Like that's just a real scenario. Like that can make and 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 shy a woman of wanting to carry another child. Like you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to deal with that again. I don't want to be like like damn like having to pick myself up and like making sure I keep myself positive because I feel like my partner is it doesn't look at me a certain way and it's like damn. But I, I'm carrying your child. Like you know what I'm saying? I don't. I I personally don't want to feel that way. And I know women who didn't like when they felt that way and didn't want to feel that way. So, you know, I hear you and I empathize with you, but that's your reality and this is my reality. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's just, it's, it's definitely a, I don't know. Like, it's, it's definitely, a, and that's why I say, like, you know, like, at the end of the day, 
I understand it for what it is, but I can't say that I fully feel like I have closure from it at all. Um, any closure I'm getting from it is on my own accord because I'm just choosing to understand it in a certain light. And I'm not mad at you, but I can also see it for what it is, if you ask me. I see it straightforward for what it is. And, and what's now, that? I, I feel like at that point, like it didn't matter if I was pregnant or not. Um, you were in your, you were feeling how you felt, and due to that, I wasn't able to get the full catering of what I felt like I deserved in my pregnancy, hmm. and that's just straight up. And that you don't have to agree to that, but that's me. That's how I feel. No, I mean, I, you know, I think I don't know. <clears throat> we have differences on, on. It's not really about the sex and the pregnancy. I, I already expressed that, but. It's like earlier, um, or when I was saying one of the episodes, when I was saying uh, things outweighing things, even though it's more. And like me, it's hard to hear that because it's like, I don't know, bro. But that's why I say I think it's so hard sometimes for men and women to have conversations because we look at things differently, right? I'm trying to be respectful of your feelings at the same time. Stand up for myself. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I'm not stand up, but just express my feelings because the fact that that can be, that can weigh so much when I was so many other things. Hmm. Right? So it's like, to think that like, I wouldn't want to have another baby by you or not saying you can say that verbatim, but it's like the fact that's a thought. And I'm like, bro, I was, I was so much, I was so many other things. Like when, I don't know when, 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 when it was time for working and it was hard and I'm like, nah, like, like, let me take, like, it was like, I was so many other things, but because I like that, it seems like that's the end of the world. And I don't think that's fair. Like, yeah, it, it could be a big thing. And I get that. But I just feel like sometimes we got to do a better job at con controlling our emotions and how our emotions and not allowing our emotions to control our mind. Because, like, yeah, it can be a hard thing, but it's like, is that really worth everything else? Like what you just said, like, I, I, like, I, it, I know you're not saying it, but it's like for somebody to be like, well, no, nah, I don't want to have enough baby by you because I don't want to feel like that. I get it. But what about all of the, the, the positive feelings that you felt that outweighed? So that one thing <laughs> outweighed everything so i don't know if you may know her name but she was on um she she's the commentator for the women's track like she she does commentary for track she's jamaican she used to run track uh she also um did uh, housewives of atlanta felix or something. her name she's no. jamaican she, her her people's own jerk jerk uh jamaican me crazy uh she literally does the commentary for the uh track track and field, mm -hmm. track and field. why you find that her and her husband had the same conversation, and her husband wanted another baby, and she told him no. And it was causing a little tension in the house because she did not want another baby. She doesn't want to leave him. She does not want another baby. It was the further reasons because she felt like a lot of parenting and things fell on her. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot for her. What I'm saying is I hear what you're saying, but carrying a baby is only, like you said, you weren't. we were having two different experiences. We were having a whole different, you were thinking this, I'm thinking this. I can't do this, you could do this, you were doing this, and I'm not, and we're having two different experiences. At the end of the day, I'm not saying I don't want to be with you or that I don't want to, yeah, you are all these other things. And just because I say that these things affected me don't mean you're not those other things, but it can also still alter the fact that, like, bringing a kid in and me going through those experiences is hard for me. So why put myself in those situ situations? I'm not saying that is what I'm saying in the end all be all. You know what I'm trying to say? I've spoke to you already about having another child. However, yeah, it is heavily considered due to what I went through through my pregnancy. So due to that, I'm not leaving you and we're not breaking up because of it. That to me seems like the end of the world, no? But it does make me heavily consider like, uh, do I want to go through that again? And I think that's normal for anybody to feel. Uh, do I want to deal with that again? Do I want to feel in those spaces? Is that healthy for me? Is that health going to be healthy for my baby that I'm carrying? And I think to think anybody shouldn't consider all the factors while they're pregnant in pregnancy of what they went through the previous pregnancy, I think that's unfair. Sonia Richard Ross. Sorry, what was her name? Say it again. Sonia Richard Sonia, Ross. Sonia, right. So her and her husband talked about this, and it was on, like, Housewives, uh, um, Housewives of Atlanta when she was on there. And they had the same issue. And she was just like, she didn't want another kid, but it doesn't mean she was divorcing him. 
She still wanted her husband. She still loved her husband. She just didn't want to have another kid because it's heavy. Mm. To carry is heavy. To deal with all those things is heavy. It's a lot. Like, you know what I'm saying? And one person is carrying that load. You know what I'm trying to say? And yeah, like you said, you are carrying loads too, but we still are living two separate worlds, as you said, at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So you are all those other things. You did all the do that, which is why we're not breaking up over it. But it does, it it will make you consider like, damn, shit, do I want to be in that situation again? Because honestly, that's too much. You know what I'm trying to say? And I think that's normal. Mm-hmm. I just think that's normal. I'm glad we could have this conversation because <clears> I feel like um, I didn't know that it, well, before you told me, I didn't know that the sex thing was that big of a deal. It's not sex per se. I think what it is is the feeling to be feel wanted. Mm. And I think that's where it boils down to. And when you minus the sex and the other and the, the pieces that come with sex, and I'm not talking about like physical contact, but the the flirting, the I want you, the like it, it's the desire of your person. And that is what's attached to it. And I think that is what's causing that causes that not the actual sex it's what leads up to the sex it what's it was it's what brings like the union the, the the togetherness of like just intimacy of just feeling like damn like you want me still like it's not just the sex you know what i'm saying so i don't want to highlight that as like oh that's some like i'm some nympho that needs this no it's just the desire like that's how we got here you know what i'm trying to say like you know like don't make me not feel one and now. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's real. That's deep. I like that. I think, um, I don't know. I, I, it's not really a takeaway from it, but it's just, I don't, I, don't, I wish I, I wish, um, you ain't had to feel like that because I never meant to make you feel like that. I mean, I thought, I, I told you you was beautiful all the time. Like, it's just, I don't know. That was, that was my bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, to put a bow, like this isn't one of those conversations where there's a, a, I think it's a learning. Yeah, uh, hopefully thing. people can uh, watch this and under and see like, oh, well, my yeah. woman, that's a big deal. You know, and, and for people that are listening to this conversation to take into consideration seasons, Right, and how to love during different seasons, what intimacy looks like in different seasons, and you know, just having the conversation and maybe sometimes having the conversation more than once to under you know, so uh, and 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 again, thank you to you both for having this conversation because it's a very vulnerable, real thing that n- many people deal with. and. There's a lot of children that are being born every day. There's a lot of people that go through pregnancy. Some people go through pregnancies in, the, in addition to what they're, the, there's risk. You know what I'm saying? You talk about mortality with black women, especially within the black community. So there's a lot of risk that come with pregnancy, especially within the black community. So uh, I just want to say thank you because I learned a lot. I'm not going to lie. Like, again, this is something that I aspire. This is something that is at the top of my list. It said, be a father. So to be able to hear this conversation, I can say that I'm truly blessed and just continue to, I mean, man, bro, like, this is for y'all. Mm-hmm. They're listening, but this is for y'all. Um, four years ago, I don't know how this conversation would have gone. Yeah, I was thinking mm-hmm. that. <laughs> just like, I was thinking that. Four years ago, I don't know how this conversation would have gone. But like, to be able to sit here and see the growth like, there's a lot there, you know what I mean? And I just want to give you both your flowers to be able to have real conversations and continue to share. This is the good news, man. And it, it just see God moving in and through each and each and each one of you all. So um, all that to say, just thank you for sharing this conversation. I don't know if there's anything else that... Y'all wanted to add, but no, man, it was a it was a great conversation, and I can say that I am blessed from hearing it. It was real. It was a moment where I was like, "Dang, I never would have thought about this." You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm thinking like I'm gonna keep it a bean. I'm mm-hmm. thinking like you know, working and this that. But that's so many of us as men. But then at the mm-hmm. same time, it's not just all about us. Mm-hmm. You you are you are a living, breathing being that's also carrying one. Um, so 
and there's so many different factors in there. So I, I just wanted to say thank you for sharing, both of you sharing this vulnerable moment in y'all journey. Thank oh, you, man. Alex. Appreciate y'all, man. This yeah. is good. Yeah. Uh, signing out. Signing Jim and I'll Scorpio podcast episode 90. 90. 90. Did we even introduce the episode in the beginning? I no? don't think so. Mm. Dang, episode 90. <laughs> oh, man. 10 away from 100. We're going to have to do something big for 100. For sure. Dang. And make sure you like, subscribe, follow us, do all that, man. Mr. Underscore J Hill. She Shade is here. Alexander Blanc is here. Yes, sir. Jim and I'll Scorpio podcast is wrapped. We out. Yep.